Hi, I'm Gabriel, and I'm here to help you with this problem. Today, we're going to find the points where the function is increasing and decreasing. And for part B, we're going to find the concavity and the inflection points. So our function says this, f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 18x plus 1. So for part A, What we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of that, which is going to be f prime of x is equal to 6x squared minus 18. Why? Because I'm using the power rule. So 3 times 2 is 6. Then I decrease the power by 1. That gives me 2. And the derivative of this would be negative 18. That one is, usually we do pretty well when we're using the power rule, but whenever you have a negative 18x, a term that looks like this, what we do is we take this and we bring it down and that's going to be our derivative. So why am I taking the derivative for the, for part A? Well, since I, since I want to find where this function is increasing and decreasing. So imagine I had a, a, a curve that did this. Well, I want to I want to find these slopes at these points because at this point the slope right here would be decreasing and the slope right here would be increasing. That's why I want to take the derivative. Furthermore, I want to set the derivative equal to zero because I want to find the precise point where I change from having a decrease to an increase. That point is where the first derivative is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this 6x squared minus 18 equal to zero and solve for x. In this case what we're going to do to solve for x is first move the 18 over so that these two cancel. 6x squared comes down. Then we're going to divide both sides by 6. Those 6 cancel. I'm left with x squared is equal to 18 divided by 6 is, what does it guys think about it? 3 then we're going to use the square root property. The square root property says this. You take the square root of both sides as long as you put a plus or minus in front of your second, second, second side, being this side. So if I take the square root of x squared and I were to take the square root of 3, I can do that as long as I put a plus or minus sign here. And the reason why I want to do that is because the square root of a perfect square is just x. Or whatever is inside the radical without the square. And we have this, plus or minus square root of 3. These are commonly referred to as critical points. So these are going to be my critical points for my first derivative, for f prime because as we'll learn for part B, there, we have critical points for our second derivative. All right, so what do we do with these critical points? Well, we're gonna draw a number line from negative infinity to infinity, and a number line is just a line that looks like this with negative infinity over here and positive infinity over here. And we're gonna write, we're gonna label our critical points negative square root of 3 and square root of 3. These, these points right here are when I change from concave up to concave down. So what do we do with these? Well we're gonna find, we're gonna have to get the test points. We, we want to test these regions, let's call them and what do I mean by regions? I mean from negative infinity to negative square root of 3. That would be region number 1. Let's call it region A. 
and then we have a region between negative square root of 3 and 3, let's call that region B, and from square root of 3 to infinity, that would be our last region, let's call it region C. So for these three regions, we have to pick a point that is between this region, that is between this region, and that is between that region. And this particular problem, I designed it so you had an example where the critical points aren't, aren't um, whole numbers, they're something that looks like this, a radical. Whenever you have a radical as a critical point, what you want to do is you want to plug it into your calculator and approximate the answer. In this case, it's approximately negative 1.7 and positive 1.7. So the test points that I could choose for my, for my case could be negative 2, 0, and positive 2. So those are, those are going to be my test points. What do we do with that? Well, I want to know within this region whether I have a positive or negative slope because a positive slope would indicate an increase, a negative slope would represent a, a decrease. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into our first derivative. So let's say I had f prime of some number is equal to 6 some number squared minus 18. Now notice that this is my first derivative that I have over here. And I'm going to plug these test points into here one by one. So let's say I want to plug in, I usually go from left to right, so I'm going to plug in negative 2 first, because I want to test region A. If this is negative 2, and this is negative 2, what's going to be my result? Go ahead and do it. This is going to be 4. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 18 is 6. So now, if I plug in a different number, let's say instead of being a negative 2, I plug in a 0. Instead of being a negative 2 here, this is also going to be a 0. Then 0 squared would be 0. 0 times 6 is 0 again. So in my region B, hence plugging in 0, I would get a negative number, negative 18. So that would mean that I would be decreasing from here to here. Now let's say I, now let's test region C. That means I need to use test point B, I mean test point 2, <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is going to be 2, this is going to be 2. And now what happens if I square 2? 2 squared is 4, just like before. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 18 is going to give us 16 again. So for test region C, I'm increasing again. And we already, for test region A, this was test region A, this was test region B, this was test region C. A is positive. Positive represents a increase, a positive slope. So it would look like that. And we're done with part A. So now we need to label them. So let's take F of x is equal or is increasing rather from negative infinity to negative 3 in other words region A negative infinity to negative square root of 3 this would be region A union with square root of 3 union with infinity. That would be region C. f of x would be decreasing from negative square root of 3 to square root of 3. 
that would be test region B. And now we can move on to part B.